Hello, I am Reverend Andrew Wolf, and welcome to this week's midweek service. Our scripture for today comes to us from the Gospel according to Matthew. Hear now the word of God. Then Jesus called to the crowd, and he said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to Jesus, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense at what they heard you've said? Jesus answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person leads another, then both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Jesus said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and then goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus then left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And just then a Canaanite woman came from that region and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David, for my daughter is tormented by a demon. After hearing this, the disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. Jesus answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. Jesus answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, saying, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. It is now mid-August, if you can believe it, and somehow we have come to this time in the rhythm of life where students are returning to school. And growing up, this was one of my favorite times of the year. I loved being able to regather with friends after a long summer apart, getting to move back into a house with old roommates or maybe new ones, starting my new classes, reading new books, learning new ideas, all this fresh new growth that begins in August. I have to admit that it has been six years since it was my last first day of school. And this week especially, my heart goes out to all of our students, to your children and your grandchildren, your nieces and your nephews, all of those who are caught up in a much, much different school year this fall. But the beginning of school, be it online or on campus, reminds me of what a gift it is for our students to be in a time and a place in their lives where their hearts are shaped and formed before they become set in stone. And I thought recently a lot about the images and the ideas that are indeed set in stone. Some of them are ideas or long-held beliefs that we thought were true because we've seen the world through certain rose-colored lenses. Others are literal stone monuments that we have erected so that their images and their meaning would endure. And since June, our country has taken a real hard look at these stones that we have built so many foundations upon. And it is clear that we as a country, we as Christians, we as individuals have stumbled on these stones that we have chiseled from our painful past. We stumble on stones that we've piled to be wayward markers meant to guide our steps into the future. And so now we are wrestling with this idea of how do we go forward from these things? How do our hearts of stone change? How is it formed and changed by the gospel of love? And so this is indeed a season for all of us, even if we are not returning to school, but a season for us to be ready to learn afresh. And so in our gospel lesson today, Jesus says to his disciples that what comes out of the mouth proceeds from our heart. 
And it is those things that proceed from our hearts that defile. The Greek word that is used in this text for heart is cardias. The root of the word is, is used for things like the word cardiac. But cardias does not simply refer to the muscle in our chest that pumps our blood. Cardias refers to our inner lives, our intentions. It's about one's character, one's core, the center of who we truly are, the foundation of our spiritual lives. And Jesus says to the disciples that what comes out of the center of our lives, what proceeds from our soul, is what defiles us. It should come as no surprise then that Matthew's gospel wants us to practice what Jesus is preaching in this first part. Because the second half of our scripture is all about this Canaanite woman, a woman who is yelling, raising her voice, shouting out from the core of her being, crying for Jesus to save her sickened daughter. For it is what comes out of the mouth that proceeds from the soul. You know the story. We just read it together. This woman appears out of the blue as Jesus is walking down the road. And she begins shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. The fact that she is a Canaanite woman is so important to this text because it marks her as a foreigner, as a Gentile, as a woman of a different race. She is totally and wholly other in relation to Jesus and to the disciples. She is unclean, an outsider, and associating with her would lead to religious and social defilement. It is a transgression of the boundaries that have been set in stone for hundreds and hundreds of years if Jesus were to talk with this woman. And so the disciples quickly realize the implications of the shouting, wailing woman, and they try and they send her away. They don't want Jesus to associate with her. They send her away for she keeps shouting. The disciples try and silence this woman. They want her to be removed because she is too loud. She is obnoxious. She is a very, very nasty woman, as one politician says. And what comes from their mouths and what proceeds from the disciples' hearts is this feeling of exclusion. It is a no to the very yes of God. And yet this woman, this Canaanite, is not going to be deterred. She is determined and yet also desperate, for her child is sick. The healthcare system has failed her, but she is ready to go against the grain if it means bringing her daughter healing. So this woman kneels before Jesus and she pleads, Lord, help me. The word that she uses in the Greek is prokineo, and prokineo means to worship. She prostrates herself down on the ground in front of Jesus, submitting fully before God in fear and despair and emptiness before him. And in this act, she acknowledges Jesus as the Son of God, as her Lord. And what comes out of her mouth and what proceeds from her heart is humility and worship and love for God. There is a, a health and a wellness company out there, and it's named HeartMath. And what this company does is that they study heartbeats, and they study the severity of heartbeats and what that means, how anxiety and how calmness have different effects on us as people. And the researchers found that when other living creatures are within five or so feet of one another, that their heartbeats tend to align. An anxious heartbeat can engender anxiety in other hearts around it, and a calm heartbeat can engender calmness in those around it. This is why researchers believe pet therapy is so helpful, that we can sense other beings, other people, through our hearts. And so what proceeds from our hearts, what emanates from the core of who we are, has a profound influence on others. In our scripture, the disciples come with anxious, heavy, beating hearts. They are worried at what might happen if this woman were to actually touch Jesus to defile him. 
And so they think that they are maintaining justice, doing what is right by sending her away. But in reality, they are stumbling over stones in their lives. They're trying not to break up social and religious customs. But if this scripture teaches us anything, it's that when our hearts are in sync with systems of oppression, we remain silent in the face of injustice. But there, there is a lot of hope in this message. Hearts can be set in stone, but the gospel reminds us that stones can be removed and repentance can take place. And it is with this deep kind of faith that the Canaanite woman comes before Jesus and she kneels down with a heavy, empty heart, a heart that is wrung out from worry, a heavy heart that is weighed down by the woes of this world. And Jesus sees into her heart and he finds great humility. And her heart and his heart sink together and together their hearts begin to turn down the anxiety and the fear within the crowd and those disciples around them. You see, when we throw ourselves at the feet of Jesus, we too find peace. And yet also when we throw ourselves down at the feet of Jesus, we find ourselves at the foot of the cross where pain and suffering are also very real, where bodies are broken and blood is shed, where oppression seems to win and our answers aren't so easy. But remember, brothers and sisters in Christ, that our faith is a faith of this Canaanite woman. It is an Easter faith, and in an Easter faith, the stone is rolled away. The stone is rolled away and we greet a new day with shouts of great thanksgiving, giving thanks that we have been liberated from the stones that hang around our necks and we have entered into a new life. So if you've gathered here today, kneeling before God in humility and in despair, hoping that God might remove the stones weighing down on your neck, or, or, or maybe you come here today realizing that you have silenced the marginalized. And you know that God is wanting you to change some of that past. To move forward in a brighter and more beautiful way. That you've been tripped up by the stones along life's path. Know this. That no matter how we come before God as the disciples or as the Canaanite woman, when we reach the depth of despair, we can do nothing more than to throw ourselves at the feet of God. And God will fill us with good faith. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.